as well as his face. I'd seen other patients with his condition before uh, in varying amounts of severity. Within 30 seconds, Dr. Jaffer immediately knew what my problem was. Lonnie's medical history, clinical presentation, and symptoms made it very clear that this was a diagnosis of hydradenitis separativa. Hydradenitis superativa is a rare inflammatory skin disease. In healthy individuals, the body eliminates dead skin cells and excretes sweat through the hair follicles. But in patients like Lonnie, for some unknown reason, dead skin cells block the pores, trapping the material in the surrounding tissue and triggering severe inflammation. Dead skin cells slough off our bodies out of our hair follicles. But when they don't get out of the hair follicles fast enough, we produce little bumps in our skin. In response, the body sends white blood cells to resolve the matter. And this results in big balls of pus. Pus is collections of white blood cells, which the only way to release them is by uh, opening it up and letting it drain. Very severe inflammatory responses. The pus has a very strong odor. The boils and nodules of uh, hydradenitis are exquisitely painful. As they fill up with pus and dead skin cells, they place a tremendous amount of pressure on the surrounding tissue. That pressure causes the nerves to fire off and cause pain. I think that the amount of pain he was experiencing was probably tremendous. The inflammation seems to turn into a snowball effect. It gets bigger and bigger and doesn't seem to stop. Just to have a name for my condition was like scoring a touchdown. After all those years of being misdiagnosed, I was so happy because he gave me a sense of hope and, and optimism that I hadn't experienced in quite some time. I felt relieved. He found a doctor willing to get to the bottom of his illness. And as Dr. Jaffer explains the disease, it becomes clear why not one of Lonnie's tests ever revealed an infection. Boils are not uh, made up of bacteria. In fact, they almost always turn out to be sterile because of the white blood cells. However, every time the growths were lance, the open wounds became highly susceptible to germs. Worst case scenario, these nodules become an opening for dangerous bacteria. And in the situation where somebody is not seeking treatment, that dangerous bacteria can become a very serious infection and can lead to death. Unfortunately, with hydradenitis separativa, uh, ongoing research has not revealed a cure. Hydradenitis separativa has been known to resolve completely without treatment. There is always the possibility that it could flare up many years later. We really don't understand uh, why it waxes and wanes and, and becomes better or worse. While there are no proven treatments for HS, there are experimental therapies that can help minimize the disease. The process of lancing and draining Lonnie's boils uh, prior to seeing me was probably necessary at the time because they were very painful and uh, needed to be drained. However, I think that there probably should have been a more aggressive approach at trying to get the inflammation under control. There are many treatments uh, that are there to try to reprogram the follicles not to block themselves. Also, some new ideas on reducing the inflammation. We decided to use medications that try to treat the inflammation that recently have come onto the scene that we use for other inflammatory conditions like rheumatoid arthritis. Being treated with the a rheumatoid arthritis drug is somewhat out of the box when you're dealing with a skin issue like I have. And I was so excited about this opportunity. When he started receiving the medications, I think instantly he felt a difference and within about six weeks he was clearing up. Unfortunately, the treatment's effect is only temporary. And to Lonnie's disappointment, the bumps return again and again. He goes through cycles where things work and then they level off and become less effective. He couldn't find anything out there that really will help him. That certain parts of his hydradenitis have quieted down, his scalp is doing much better, uh, but then there are other areas that continue to be involved, uh, such as the underarms. Lonnie has to continue to be positive and attempt new treatments because there's always new things being developed. While Lonnie continues to hope that one day they'll figure out how to manage his condition, he can't help but wonder why it took almost two decades to find a doctor who could identify the disease. Hydradenitis separativa is an unusual disease that we don't see too often. The severe forms, uh, as in Lonnie's hydradenitis, is usually very, very rare. It's really a clinical diagnosis. There's no laboratory test or uh, pathology examination that can truly confirm it. For many people who suffer hydradenitis separativa, 
their condition is often a source of embarrassment, and many of them don't pursue treatment or see physicians on a regular basis. Today, five years since he was diagnosed, Lonnie continues to pursue his love of football as a successful sports writer. And despite random flare-ups, he's never given up hope for a cure. He still struggles with boils continuing to develop and pain. He has a great attitude. I've had to have reconstructive face surgery to get rid of all the scar tissue on the left side of my face and major reconstructive surgery done on my groin and thigh area. I'm very pleased with the result. You just have to have a positive attitude. I've dealt with this for over two decades, but I'm optimistic about my future. And throughout it all, one person has never let Lonnie's disease affect her. Kimberly and Lonnie are now married. Words can't really express how supportive Kimberly's been. She's been the rock that you need to have in a relationship. I just love her so much. Going through this process has made us a stronger couple. We've grown closer and we take very little for granted. Kimberly and I have tried to stay active and we go on daily walks. I'm still going to be productive and being with my wife is still the most important thing. My pressure now is just try to live a happy, healthy life on a daily basis. While there was no denying that Lonnie White had a disturbing skin condition, Teresa Ennis was forced to endure a series of bizarre symptoms only she could see. In the spring of 1993, 16-year-old Teresa Ennis walked into a Long Island diner with her friends, just for a burger and fries. She had no idea her future husband was about to join their group. A mutual friend introduced us, and from the moment I met him, I knew that there was something special about him. Initially, the first thing that struck me about her was her beautiful eyes. And after I got to know her, I just found out that she was just a great person inside. We were all about just enjoying life to the fullest. I decided to propose to Teresa on the beach, and I said, I want you always to be happy, and I want to be happy with you. Dan and I got married in 2005, and we relocated to Lexington, Virginia. I was working as an electrician's helper, and Teresa was working in real estate. I loved my job. I loved meeting new people and visiting new properties. Life was very good for the Racklins. And in 2007, when the couple finds out Teresa's pregnant, they couldn't be happier. I always dreamed of having a child. Teresa felt that her life was coming together, and she was just so excited. She sails through the pregnancy. But just weeks before her due date, Teresa experiences something very disturbing. I was at work on my laptop and I noticed these two spots that looked like two little flies on my screen buzzing around. And then they progressively got larger and larger and it was shaking. I was terrified and so I called Dan. I said, something's wrong with my vision. And in minutes, Dan arrives at her office and rushes Teresa to the local hospital. And while we were driving, I got this headache in the back of my head and my neck. I was getting really worked up by the minute. I was sweating, I was breathing fast. I was so close to delivering my first child. I was very scared. She could possibly lose our baby. The doctor did a thorough exam and he thought that it was pretty classic for an ocular migraine. An ocular migraine is a temporary disturbance in vision that occurs when blood vessels suddenly constrict, reducing blood flow to the eye. The doctor explained that an ocular migraine could occur at the end of pregnancy due to the fact that your estrogen level fluctuates and they weren't very concerned about it. I was very relieved that there was nothing wrong with the baby. I was really happy. It was a temporary situation. My vision would return and I didn't have anything to worry about. About 40 minutes after the start of this, I noticed my vision began to come back. The headache was gone. They told me to just go home and to not work for the rest of my pregnancy. 
we went back home and everything seemed to go back to normal, so we were happy with that. I just stayed at home and got ready for the baby to come. Just after Christmas, right on schedule, Teresa goes into labor. When Ashley was born, we counted 10 fingers and 10 toes, and we were just very happy that we had a healthy baby girl. I was excited to bring her home and have a whole new life with our own little family. My vision was great, and I thought for sure, well, you know, I can put all this behind me and forget it ever happened. I went back to work when Ashley was eight weeks old. It was pretty hard, but it was something that I really wanted to do. I loved it. Life really couldn't have been better. Teresa settles into a comfortable routine as the next eight months sail by. Then, one day in August, she's suddenly hit by a shocking new symptom. I was at work. When I looked at my coworkers, it looked like I was looking at them through a kaleidoscope. I would see bits and pieces of their faces, like they would have one eye and one ear on the other side of their head. I called Dan and I said, you need to take me to the hospital because I'm losing my vision by the second. We didn't have an explanation now. I wasn't pregnant. This was not supposed to be happening. I was very concerned at this point. I picked Teresa up and we rushed to the ER again. The doctors took me in right away and examined me. I didn't know what was happening or what to expect. The doctors explained to us that there could be a bigger problem, could be something with her brain. So I got very concerned. The doctor thought just to be thorough, to do a CT scan, to just help rule out anything serious. I thought that there was a chance of having a brain tumor. I just thought, what else could really be causing this other than that? I was really terrified. The doctor came back with the results and he said that everything came back normal. I didn't have any brain tumors. He said some people just have a migraine condition and once you develop it, you've always got a migraine condition. It was, well, maybe it'll happen again and maybe it won't and good luck. I was really scared that I may have these forever just because I didn't know how I was going to live a normal life. I knew that I had to kind of ignore them and hope for the best. Over the following three months, the strange visual disturbances seem to come and go at will, and Teresa gradually learns to live with them. She has no idea that the worst is yet to come. I was driving from downtown to my house, and I realized that something was wrong with my eye. It just seemed like there was a gray line in my vision that was almost like an imprint from a camera flash. It was like a gray, transparent arch. All I knew was that I just wanted to get home. When Teresa came in the door and told me what was happening, I was very concerned. So we called the doctor and made an emergency appointment to see him. Dan drove me up to the eye doctor where I was dilated. And the eye doctor looked in and he said, yes, there's something there. It's a cotton wool spot. I'd never heard the term and he said it's a retinal infarct. A retinal infarct is an interruption of blood flow to the retina's nerve fibers, resulting in a partial or total loss of vision. The doctor told me that it was like a little mini stroke that I had in my eye, which meant that there was a cutoff of blood flow to the rest of this little tiny vessel in my eye, and it leaves a marking that looks like cotton wool. The doctor told me that this shouldn't cause any permanent vision loss, but that it could take anywhere from four to six weeks to resolve itself. I was relieved. But Teresa's relief is short-lived. The retinal infarct might be a sign of a serious underlying disorder. The doctor said that cotton wool spots are most commonly found in people that have some sort of an autoimmune disease, and he believed that there was 